Right, welcome back to this video. In this video, we'll have a quick overview of Visual Studio Code and your environment that you will be working in. So what you can do is to go to your view menu and then choose the command palette. So this will open up your command palette like this and you can basically just start typing Flutter there. Now you can see that you can create a new application project, you can run Flutter Doctor, uh, you can create a new module project, a new package, a new plugin or just run Flutter Upgrade. So we are interested in creating a new application project. So I created a folder for myself that says Flutter Projects 2021 and I've got a folder ready where I can actually start creating my Flutter project. So you can just click there, go into that folder where you want to have your project and then say select a folder to create the project in. And then you can give your Flutter application a name. So very important here that you keep everything lowercase and use the underscore if, if you want to separate specific words. So we can say something like example project, uh, let's say one, something like that and just click on OK. And that will create a brand new Flutter project for you. And you can close down your uh, welcome page and you can see it creates the iOS language Swift. It also creates for Android language Kotlin and it's currently running. It tells you then that your Flutter project is ready and that you can connect a device. Okay, so on the left hand side, you can see now there's a lot of things that was created in this example project folder of yours. You can see there's new folders for Dart tool, for idea. Then you'll see there's an Android folder. So this Android folder is actually an Android Studio project folder that you can open up with Android Studio. So this one, you'll see there's App, Gradle, and so forth, and those guys that worked with Android before. Uh, you can go into App, for example, into Source, into Main, and you can go to Java. There will you find your Java files, your Kotlin files, your resource files, and there's your Android manifest file, which we'll get to also later on to make some changes in your Android manifest file. Right, then uh, you will also see there's an iOS folder. So if you're creating apps for iOS for Apple, then this is your project folder for it. And if, you've, if you're running on a Mac, then you will also need to install Xcode and Xcode will be used to compile this iOS folder for you. Whereas we will be focusing on Android only, which means that Android Studio will be compiling the code under this folder for us automatically. We don't need, really need to go in and do anything in these folders. We are interested in this lib folder and maybe some of the files that follows after it. So inside of this lib folders where we will create most of our files, we will also be creating some other folders later on, but we'll guide you when we get there. Now you see the main.dart file is the one that opens up. And as with dart, you can see that there's a main method that acts actually the starting point of your application. So like before, you will need to have a main method to start your Flutter app in. Then you'll see there's also a test folder there and there's a web folder. So if you're creating an application for web, you will also see there's your web folder. Right, so there's the few other files there also, like the pubspec lock and there's also the pubspec.yaml file. And this is also a file that we will be working with a lot. Now, what is this file doing? So if you go into the file that you can see that right from the start, it gives you the app's name gives you a description of the app so you can maybe change your description and your name there. If you go down, you will see also there's the versioning. So whenever you're going to release a new app to the Google Play Store, for example, you'll need to be able to change these values every time you release a new version. For example, you can change this one to build number two and then you can call this 101, for example. So what the user will see is the first part, 101 in the App Store, but you will know it is build number two. So this build numbers must follow up on each other, one, two, three, four, five, and carries on, but the versioning is up to you how you specify that. So I'm gonna keep this at the values they were. And then uh, if we go to environment, you can see that this is the SDK that we're currently using, so you can just leave that as it is. Then we get to the dependencies part where there's some Flutter dependencies and one of them that we're using currently in this example project that was created for us is Cupertino icons. So if you head over to, let's go to pub.dev in your browser, you can start typing for specific packages that you are looking for. And the, the one specified there currently is the Cupertino icons. So if we go to Cupertino icons, search for it, and we click on 
enter to start searching for it, you can see it's one of the first ones popping up and its popularity is 100% popular, popular because it's basically included in every single Flutter application that you're creating. As last updated December 16, it is the Flutter dev team that's actually created these and it's null safe. Right, and you can see it's uh, compatible for Flutter, Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, Web and Windows. So you've got everything covered in this one package. Now, if you go to Cupertino icons, you can basically see it's these type of icons that we are using in iOS. And you can also go to this link to see a whole lot more. This is just a few of them showing up here. And uh, you can see that how to install this in your app by just going to dependencies and adding Cupertino icons 102. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see it's Cupertino icons 102. It's actually creating the newest one. But it could be that after a while, after creating this, there's a version 3 that's coming out and you can come back here and change that to a version 3. So we will show you later on how to actually add dependencies and other packages inside of your code so you can actually start using them. So this web page, Flutter or pub.dev, will actually be a very useful site if you want to do something uh, for your specific application and you cannot find code on how to do that. So for example, if we start typing a package like, for example, Firebase, and uh, you can see there's different Firebase options. So search for that and you'll get the Firebase uh, libraries there. Uh, you can also see how to install them by just going and saying Firebase. So you just basically copy it from here and you can go and paste it into Flutter, into your Flutter project in the pubspec.yaml and it will start compiling. Now in this file, uh, spacing is very, very important. So the number or the amount of spaces from the left hand side up until here is very, very important. But we will look the, at this in another video when we will start using some of these dependencies. Then you'll also see that there's some dev dependencies and one of them is uses material design. So if we go back to the web page again, now material design was something that was introduced in 2014 where they created some color palettes for us to be able to use in our applications to make sure that our applications actually look good. Now there's a lot of other things that's part of material design and you can go through the web page but this is basically a color system that is used extensively and came out with a specific Android version. So this is Android's part of saying you know this is how we can do some colors and how we can make our applications look good. So you can go and have a look at the material design website also there and there's a lot of different websites that's giving you some color help and stuff like that in order to make use of material design. So this is a library that's also automatically included as well as the iOS library which is your Cupertino icons. Then we can also go and we can add some assets. So just like we did here with the dev dependencies and so forth, we can take out this comment and we can add an assets part to it, which means we need to go and create an assets directory on the left hand side. And then we can have our images listed in here, which is just basically a way to tell our application that this is where you get the images that I'm currently using in my application. So we'll get into this quite fast, so don't worry about that. We will look at this in detail. Then also in your pubspec.yaml, you will see that we can add some fonts in there. So fonts, any type of font family that you want, when is it bold, when is it italic, and so forth, what is the weight, everything can be specified under fonts also. And also under assets, it's not just images, you can have videos, you can have animations, you can have pictures, and anything else that you're using in your application. Right, so this was a very fast overview of your environment in Visual Studio Code, but we'll have a look at all of these different aspects again as we are progressing through this course. Hope you find this video useful. See you in the next one.